Well, today marks the 40th anniversary of the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald. The captain was from Ottawa Hills. Six crewmen were also from this area. The ship sank during a violent Lake Superior storm, killing all 29 men on board. And even though the tragedy was the biggest maritime investigation in Great Lakes history, the cause remains a mystery. 13 ABC's Lisa Guyton has been covering the story for more than 20 years. And tonight, Lisa takes us to a museum in Michigan that's closely tied to the tragedy. The waters of Lake Superior hold a lot of secrets. One of the biggest mysteries is what happened to the Edmund Fitzgerald. The ore carrier carried her crew to the bottom of Lake Superior on November 10th, 1975. The lake it is said never gives up her dead when the skies of November turn gloomy. This is part of the Coast Guard radio transmission from that night. It looks from the information that we have that it's uh, fairly certain that the, uh, that the uh, Fitzgerald went down. And uh, we're talking now about uh, a matter of life and death and looking for survivors that might be in life rafts or in the, in the water. Of course, there were no survivors. And today, so many unanswered questions remain. I think that's part of the attraction of this story and of this shipwreck, this mystery uh, that has just not been solved yet. The wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald sits about 17 miles offshore here at Whitefish Point, Michigan. As you can see, it is still a very busy shipping lane for Great Lakes freighters. Today is a beautiful fall day. Of course, it was a much different story on November 10th, 1975. One of the worst storms these waters had seen in decades was in full force. These waves are two to three feet. On the night the Fitz went down, waves were at more than 30 feet, with winds at 90 miles an hour. Cheryl Rosman's father, Ray Cundy, was a watchman on board the Big Fitz. He started sailing at an early age, and he really loved it. He thought it was a real, real privilege to be serving on the Fitzgerald. She vividly remembers the last time she saw her father. As the big freighters go, it was bigger than most. With a crew and good captain, well seasoned. It was an August day in 1975. She took her children to visit with him as the boat was loading iron ore in Silver Bay, Minnesota. We stood there and we just uh, watched as the boat started leaving. And we just kept waving to him. He was. He was waved. Goodbye. I didn't know at that time that it was going to be the last. And the last thing anyone expected was for the Fitzgerald to become one of the casualties of the shipwreck coast just a few months later. And later that night when his lights went out of sight came the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. They thought it was invincible, you know, and it wasn't. Cheryl learned about the loss on TV, and at first it wasn't even clear that the missing freighter was the Fitzgerald. The news came on at 11 o'clock and it said that there was a ship missing in Lake Superior. And I right away thought of my dad and I prayed that he was okay. In a matter of hours, she got the news that her father was not okay. Sometimes it's, it's, it's like it just happened and then other times it seems so, so long ago that I've seen them. The theories about what happened range from the ship scraping bottom on a shoal to the wicked weather conditions that night or a series of rogue waves. Whatever happened was so fast there wasn't even time to call for help. The Coast Guard investigation of the tragedy is the biggest in Great Lakes history. The bottom line is that ship uh, was doing what, what it had done so many times before, uh, but there were a series of factors that we don't all completely understand, and I think that's what it was. Really, there were a combination of factors that led to that ship sinking. Whitefish Point is known as the shipwreck coast. Hundreds of vessels have gone down in the same waters, but the Edmund Fitzgerald is what brings most people to the museum that sits along the shore. People don't always realize that this ship is this close, and I think it makes it all the more real to them. The Great Lakes Shipwreck Museum has brought comfort to Cheryl and many of the other people who lost loved ones. Inside its walls sits the Fitzgerald's bell. We don't have our, our men. And we needed something that we could touch or look at. It was retrieved from the wreckage in 1995. The bell came up and it clanged as soon as it hit the water. And uh, I kind of felt, and so did the other family members, that it was like 
telling us that everything's okay. But the retrieval of the bell didn't bring any other answers about the wreck to the surface. They remain buried with the ship. Often people will ask, are there new theories? Do we have a better understanding as to why this ship sank? And the answer is really no. It doesn't matter to me, not anymore. And all that remains is the faces and the names of the wives and the sons and the daughters. Now, the wreckage is in Canadian waters, and it is a legal gravesite, meaning no one can dive on it. That's something the victims' families fought to accomplish for years. Ruth Hudson led the charge to have the site deemed off limits. Her son, Bruce, was one of the victims who died on that ill-fated freighter. She died last night at the age of 90. She was a part of many of our Fitzgerald stories here on 13 ABC through the years. She will be missed by many. Reporting live, Lisa Guyton, 13 ABC Action News.